Good morning. It's Isabel from Autism Untouched. This morning's video that I want to share with you is how to be an autism parent. Now, I have had an older son who's Asperger's and Matthew, my youngest, was diagnosed with severely autism. So I do have a fairly good idea of the mistakes that we can make and how, how to be kind to ourselves and be respected in the community outside there for the sake of our kids and for the sake of ourselves. I want to, I, I'm going to make a few videos about Asperger's as well because the, the signs of autism, the signs of it, I see a lot of people have got a lot of videos that they make about signs but I want to talk to you about how to gain people's respect and how to get things done for your child how to get them the services they need and how to get it in a way that you are dignified and respected I want to explain to you why I am saying this to you because when my youngest son was diagnosed with autism I was still very much ignorant about autism at all because my eldest son had a lot of the same uh, signs when he was small, a baby, toddler and a child, but I didn't see it and I had, I was a young mum, 21 years old, I didn't have any um, experience of autism. I just want to see if there's somebody at my door, just hang on. But that's okay they've gone now so yes with my eldest son I was bullied a lot by teachers and by other adults because I didn't know, I didn't even know autism existed when I was um, that age and I was living in South Africa that was something that was completely under unswept under the carpet nobody talked about it nobody knew there were kids like that so I knew there was something different about my son and for many years, I blamed myself. I had this heavy, heavy guilt on my shoulders. I thought it was something I did wrong in the way I raised him. I was crucifying myself every day, thinking I could have done better. I could have, I, I felt like I failed him. And I'm going to, to make a video to explain to you why it is so, so important for us to take care of ourselves. Because if, if we don't take care of ourselves, we can't take care of our kids. I really feel so strong about this. I want to show you um, how, how I look. About a year ago, I had a change of heart and a change of mind. And I want to share it with you. And I want you to know today, I'm not judging you. I understand what it feels like to be down and out and to feel like you just want to sit at home the whole day and just eat chocolate and donuts and and drink coffee and just forget about the outside world guys it doesn't it doesn't work for us it's bad for us for our bodies and our self-esteem and it doesn't work for our kids i want to encourage you this morning um i'm not only going to talk about about me but also about the the autism and because us as parents we are just as important as our kids we completely forget about our own needs let's be honest if you've got an autistic child your in the in, in the front of your mind at all times is that child's well-being and what needs to be done for that child you are constantly thinking about that child's future and i'm going to share a lot of things with you guys so i really just i'm excited that i can encourage someone and that i can tell you my life was really a mess um and i i know things can be turned around so about a year ago I had numerous days where a lot of the feedback that was coming my way about my son, like I've told you before, a lot of it was negative. The diagnosis was negative. Feedback from teachers was always negative. He's not working with them. He doesn't want to do anything. He's this, he's that. At home, I didn't have all of those problems, but it still gets to you. You know what I mean? You, you will know what I mean. It still gets to you when somebody keeps on putting your child down it does get to you you don't always show it but it does and you sometimes get aggressive you get angry and you say things you shouldn't have said 
But this is what I've learned in the past year that I learned that I have to take care of myself because if you take care of you, if you take care of your, ex if your outer, your appearance, your body, if you are being kind to you, people will start respecting you. I'm telling you, I used to be really overweight, not judging people that are overweight because I was there for many years. I was an emotional eater. And because of all the stress I had with my, with my kids, uh, my girls are, are completely neurotypical. They, I've got two girls and two boys. And it was really hard for me to cope with all the criticism I was getting. You know, you can do this better, you can do that better. And a year ago, something in a year changed. I decided I'm gonna lose weight. People, I, I, you will think, what is weight loss got to do with, with autism? Listen to me. Hang in there. I decided, I've tried years and years and years to lose weight. But I, my mindset was wrong. I wanted to lose weight to show my family I can do it because I went on all the diets you can think of always, you know, pills, shakes, you name it, I've been on it. And I wanted to show my family I can lose weight because they said to me, you've tried everything, just forget about it, you'll never lose weight. I lost 20 pounds, that's 10 kilos, in almost six months. And I am still, I've still got a lot of weight to lose, but I want to tell you, it has done a lot for my self-esteem because I used to eat every time I'm upset. If somebody says anything about Matthew or it's a bad report, then I came to the conclusion, you as a, as a parent that's watching that, a parent of an autistic child, you don't have to accept anything that anybody tells you. I don't care if it's medically backed up. You go according to your gut feeling. There is some things that you have to, of course, accept. Certain things, like I had to accept my child can't go to a normal school, Matthew. I had to accept he was not talking at the age of five. It was hard and I work with him and he's talking more and more now, but there were some things I had to accept at the time, but things change. And can I tell, can I tell you something? There's the Dutch accent coming through. When I started brushing my hair properly, putting on a bit of makeup, I didn't have a wardrobe full of clothes to wear, but I, I decided that the few things I went through my wardrobe, I threw gave away to the to the charity shops, not threw away, gave away the clothes that was too small for me and the ones that were looking, making me look frumpy and were way too big and stretched out, I gave those away. The ones that were not nice, I threw away. Nothing that I gave away was, was something I wouldn't want to wear. And I decided I'm going to sew these clothes and I got myself a few outfits I'm not working at the moment. Like I said, I've started wanting to start my own business. I'll tell you more of that. It's all part of self-love. It doesn't mean if you have an autistic child that your life is over, that your dreams and goals, it doesn't matter. That is a lie. I believed it for many years, so I know how imprinted it is in our brain. This child comes first. Yes, their needs are important. But if you don't take care of your own dreams and goals and of your own needs and your body, if you don't take care of you, you are going to be burned out and drained. And that is what happened to me. I had a mindset change up here. One day I was sitting on that couch over there. One morning, it was early. I got up, made my coffee. Everybody was still asleep. And I realized how tired I am. I woke up tired and I realized something has to change. I'm unhappy with my weight and it makes me feel like a failure and I'm unhappy with 
the way people see Matthew. And I was sitting there and asking myself, how can I change that? I, a friend of mine introduced me to the keto diet and I did a low carb keto diet. I couldn't do the keto diet just like it is because I cook for a family of six people every day, but I tried my best to cut down on cookies and things like that, sugars, and I lost 20 pounds within six months. And I have never, I have not picked it up. I've gone back to my normal eating habits, but luckily I haven't picked it, picked it up, but I've gone back to doing low carbon keto now. I want to lose more weight. Point being is, every time I was overwhelmed or the teacher said something about Matthew or it was bad news, which was most days for a time, I used to come home and I just wanted to eat and for the sadness to go away. Because I love my son, Matthew, and I didn't want people to speak like that of him. And you know what? As I was sitting there, a voice said to me, if you don't agree with the things that people say, you don't have to argue with anybody, you just don't acknowledge it. About your son, it's got no power. You can listen to professionals, you can, I go to IEP meetings, we discuss my son's growth, goals for the next six months, nothing wrong with it. But I had to come to a point where I changed the way I look, not only physically, but outwardly. I started wearing makeup again. I started, if my I couldn't straighten my hair or have it long, I couldn't go to the hairdresser, I couldn't afford a very expensive, but let me tell you, I couldn't afford to go to an expensive hairdresser at that time. And I decided I'm going to rise up out of this, start losing weight, and work on my appearance. You will be amazed how people will change towards you if you start taking care of you. The reason why a lot of people don't respect autistic parents is because they look run down, they look tired. I'm not talking to teachers here or to caregivers who don't have that child 24-7. I know I used to hardly have time for a bath or for a shower. I neglected myself big time. And I realized that is why people are treating me that way. Feel that they can every day just walk over me and complain about my son and tell me how to raise my son. I stopped it. You know, you know what? That's not being rude. That's not being in denial. That is loving yourself. Because if you don't love yourself, nobody's going to respect you. People are going to not respect your opinion. I find sometimes, you and I do research about autism. We find out about new apps, new technology, new exercises. I do it all the time. I do my research and I'll share whatever I find with you guys. But people don't want to listen to you if you sit at your IP meeting with a tracksuit pants, I'm not judging, but I know because I was there, if you're sitting there with no makeup, looking run down, no. Pull up your shoulders, sit up straight, and put on your makeup and your poker face if you have to. I learned that when I started respecting myself, Matthew also got the respect he deserved. How does that work? It is how it works. It is amazing, but it works. I started getting dressed every day. Not the most expensive outfit, but what I had, clean, neat and tidy. Tied up my hair if I, if I could. I didn't have time to straighten my hair. Put on a little bit of makeup. I made sure I got up a bit earlier to make time. To sit down, have a cup of coffee in the morning, get dressed and then start packing lunches. I've got two kids in school. 
one is working one is studying part-time and working but I only pack the little ones lunches sometimes my son that's in college the one that's got ash birches he works a night shift job three times a week and he studies so to pay for his car and his tuition and I help him out by packing his lunch his lunch sometimes like mums do but I actually want to convince him one day to make a video and tell you in his own words how it was for him as a child with ash birches. He didn't want to, he, when we started realizing as an adult that he had the same traits, he didn't want to accept it. But as I was talking to him and started, I, I, I realized then how much autistic people are being shamed for being autistic. Adults or not, they are not respected. My son, the one that is has got ash birches, he is doing a degree in social work. He's going to be a social worker. Sensitive, good kid. Had some issues as a teenager, but he got through it. And that's what I want to tell you, is that if I, if I look back, at how I disrespected myself when my oldest son was small the way people walked over me and did not want to accept that there is something different in him tried to blame it on me I just you know just walk over me that's how I was single parent at the time I was a single parent for seven years before I got married to my husband that I have now and Matthew, I'm telling you, his life changed for the better when I started taking care of me. I started loving myself, allowing myself to, to look presentable. I'm talking to you, especially you women out there. Men as well, but it's more women. Women, let's face it, most of us women take care of our kids. Men do help as well. But we are the ones that neglect ourselves. And I want to tell you, take courage. I can, if, if you guys want me to make a video of how I, I lost my weight, how I did it, I'll make that. You can put it in the comments. But, uh, yes. I can tell you since I started taking care of my body, Putting clothes on, on that it's not perfect, but it at least has got a bit, a bit of a, a fit. Putting on some lipstick, a little bit of foundation, a little bit of mascara. Sometimes tying up my hair. Sometimes I'll put a little nice, beautiful clip in my hair. Might look old-fashioned to some people, but it's about our self-esteem, people. It's not about what other people think. And it's your attitude. I started going to my... To my son's class in the mornings with him as I always go walking in there proud shoulders back looking like here I come this is my child I represent him and if you don't listen to him you're gonna deal with me if you don't take if you don't respect his boundaries you're gonna deal with me and I wasn't being rude I didn't have to get Upset, crying when I'm upset. I stopped doing that because, you know what? People feed into that. When you start crying and get upset and you're all flustered when, when, when people upset you and tell you things about your child, no. Keep calm and cool. Respect yourself and people will respect you. I'm telling you, it has changed Matthew's life for the better as well. Have a lovely day. I'll speak to you guys later. Bye-bye.